Blood Warlock, Succubus Partner in the Apocalypse. Chapter 8 Stronger and Stronger A handsome young man of 22 or 23 in blue sportswear, with a bow in his left hand and a half-empty quiver on his back, hurried over. So that guy is the archer from before. Baizemin thought silently. When the young archer saw the silver-haired woman, his eyes lit up and as if a weight had been lifted from his shoulders, he smiled, Bing Shui, I'm glad you're okay, Bing Shui? Baizemin blinked before he finally realized the reason why this woman looked familiar. Shangguan Bing Shui, a fourth-year student and current student association president. She was not only the most beautiful woman on campus, but also the number one person in grades. Bai Zemin knew a little about her because he had met her a couple of times when she, as student president, organized student assemblies to report important information and events. However, since she was not important to him, he had simply forgotten about her existence. I'm glad you're okay too, Chen He. Shang Guan Bing Shui's cold and indifferent gaze did not change very much when she saw the young man. However, Bai Zemin noticed that the strange glint of hatred or repulsion had dimmed greatly when she looked at him. Anyway, since the zombie problem was fixed, Baizemin did not stay to listen to this group's conversation and turned around, walking away quietly. Wait a moment, little brother. Liang Peng quickly shouted when he saw him walking away. His words had attracted the attention of the other pair. Baizemin stopped and turned around to look at him silently, waiting for his next words. How about you stay here with us? Liang Peng offered. With the strength of the four of us together, we can easily wipe out those creatures and live a better life. Bai Zemin had a strange glint in his eyes. He simply turned around and as he walked away said casually, I am simply going to look for a dozen students and teachers whom I saved earlier. I didn't go out of my way to clean up this place, to casually leave. Eh? Liang Peng was puzzled. On the other hand, Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at him coldly before turning around and walking away as well. The young archer, Chen He, quickly followed her as they chatted with each other. Ten minutes later, the group of survivors rescued by Bai Zemin, Liang Peng, Shang Guan Bing Shui, and Chen He, joined together to form a large group of about 70 people. Because the storm was still raging with no apparent intention of stopping soon, the blood and metallic smell it gave off were washed away by the rain in a few minutes. This could prevent other creatures from approaching this place in search of food. However, it also had its disadvantages. One of these disadvantages was that everyone's clothes were completely wet. Unfortunately, they could only hold on like this for now. After arguing for five minutes, the people hiding inside the gymnasium were forced to open the doors regardless of their fear. Although none of them were willing to open the doors and risk letting danger in, after Liang Peng threatened that if they did not open the doors he would break it down by force, they had no choice but to give in. Bai Zemin was surprised to discover a total of approximately 30 people hiding inside the gymnasium. Among these 30 people, there were men, women, and some teachers. They all looked at them with apprehension and suspicion. As for this, Bai Zemin ignored it. He separated from everyone and walked around the premises, making sure that there was no hidden danger of any kind. The Beijing University Gymnasium was really huge and although it was called a gymnasium, it was a huge building with all kinds of functions. There was a large indoor basketball court, a sports equipment room, and a cafeteria. The cafeteria was by Zemin's target on this occasion. Bang! Bang! The metal door was closed tightly. By Zemin, who had moved away from the group, could hear the sound of banging coming from inside. He could not help but frown slightly as he thought. Since the cafeteria had glass windows, some insects probably managed to get in, as for bigger creatures, that was impossible since there were metal bars on the windows. Unless a monster with a lot of strength or sharp weapons like the great fast mantis appeared, there was no way they could get in. Therefore, that sound could only be from zombies. Baizemin looked to the left and right to make sure no one else was there. After making sure, he opened his backpack and took out the two orbs he had obtained earlier as well as the scroll. How does this color thing work? Bai Zemin thought aloud, forgetting that there was another existence there who could hear him. It's the colors of the rainbow. Lilith pointed out with a beautiful smile. Seeing Bai Zemin's questioning look, she explained, from lower rank to higher rank, treasures are divided as follows, red orb is equivalent to a normal grade treasure. 
An orange orb equals a rare grade treasure. A yellow orb is equivalent to a magic grade treasure. Green orbs are equivalent to epic grade treasures. Cyan color means legend grade treasure. Indigo colored orbs are equivalent to semi god grade treasures. Finally, violet colored orbs mean god grade treasures. The corner of Byzemin's mouth constricted several times and he couldn't help but complain, you should have stopped your explanation on magic grade or epic grade treasures. Now that I look at this red orb, suddenly I don't think it's worth much. MMM. I think you're misunderstanding something. Lilith smiled and reminded him of something important, even a red grade treasure is more valuable than a high tech machine gun. Let me explain something to you. When you defeat a creature, you absorb its soul power. When that creature's soul power is much higher than yours, the soul record concentrates all the power you were unable to absorb in the form of treasures. The higher the level of your enemy, the higher the chances of getting a higher quality treasure, and the higher the remaining soul power, the higher the probabilities go up even more. Therefore, even the red-colored orb in your hands is more valuable than you think at the current stages. Lilith concluded. Hearing her words, Byzemin couldn't help but feel better. Although he felt like asking more questions, he first wanted to finish what he was about to do, the questions could be asked later. After squeezing the red orb hard, it broke and a new treasure appeared in front of Byzemin. Velocity boots, normal grade treasure, extremely light, easy to wear, and automatically adapts to the body. When equipped, agility plus 10. Byzemin's eyes lit up and his heart filled with joy. It was just a normal treasure, but these boots increased his agility by plus 10 points. This was equivalent to one-fifth of Byzemin's total agility. He quickly equipped the boots and immediately felt his body become much lighter than before. Now, with his 64 agility points, Byzemin was more than six times faster than a normal person before the arrival of the soul record on planet Earth. Repressing his latent excitement, he did the same with the orange orb. Full coat, rare treasure, a jacket that covers from the upper body to the knees. It can stop anything from light shotgun shells to 9mm caliber bullets. When equipped, all attributes plus 5. Byzemin held the jacket in his hands and almost wanted to roar at the sky to say thank you. With this treasure, he was now impervious to several types of firearms. Even if medium-caliber bullets were too strong, with this treasure his survivability had skyrocketed another level. He didn't even have to fear being scratched by zombies. As long as he protected his head and from the knees down, there should be no problem with his safety. Without delay, Byzemin took off the wet jacket he was wearing and put on the full coat. He immediately felt his attributes improving once again, much to his delight. That treasure is good. Among the best quality within the rare grade, just like your Shen Yuan sword. Congratulations. Lilith smiled cheerfully at him. Byzemin was surprised when he realized that she actually looked genuinely happy for him, puzzling him. Lilith, why are you nice to me? He asked feeling a little suspicious. Lilith bit her lips and blinked her long eyelashes as she said in a soft voice, I already told you. I want you to be mine. Byzemin rolled his eyes and wisely decided to stop asking. Although his appearance wasn't bad, he wasn't a handsome guy either. Much less so handsome that the biggest beauty he had ever seen in his entire life would fall in love with him at first sight. Without delay and fearing that someone else was coming to this place, Byzemin turned his attention to the remaining scroll. Special Forces Soldier, Unranked Passive Skill, Level 5, by learning this passive skill you will automatically become a person with the same level of combat experience as Special Forces troops. At the same time, your control and knowledge of your world's firearms grow exponentially.